Hi friends. So I have made a decision. I am going to become a really good knitter. And if I'm really honest with myself, part of what is holding me back as a knitter is this gauge issue. And it has been the bane of my existence. Every, I make sweaters, I love them, but they don't really fit me properly. And if I'm really honest and I face my shadow self face on in the mirror, it's because I'm not willing to put in the time to make a proper gauge swatch in the round, which is what I normally, I normally knit in the round and even knitting in the flat, knitting a, a swath of fabric flat is not going to really give me the actual measurements that I need. What I'm, what I did was I just, I knit back and forth flat for a, a few rows and I got an approximate number of stitches per inch on the needle that I wanted to use with the yarn that I wanted to use. And based on that measurement, I cast on enough that would be for two sleeves and I knit in ribbing and I knit in stockinette and then hi so I am following Elizabeth's advice <laughs> and I knit in the round what I estimated could be a sleeve when I had a kind of a guess at what my gauge would be. Um, so now I'm going to actually see what my gauge is. And I think it's bigger than I want it to be for my sleeve. It's a little too, so I still want to make it smaller, but I'll have a good gauge of my swatch with this yarn by measuring my stitches and here I go doing that. I took an actual honest measurement of those uh, two after I had after I knit what looked like a good amount. I took an actual realistic honest measurement of those things and I was able to get my gauge swatch. So once I have my and I took and I'm keeping track of all my stuff in my book. I have my gauge swatch. I also am using a sweater that fits me really really well. that I bought years ago that I really like and that I want it to be kind of modeled on this on these measurements. So I measured, I took out my sweater and I put it on a table and I measured it really carefully and I got the hem measurement, I got the waist measurement and I got the bust measurement. And then I'm taking, and, and I knit up my sleeves. And what I did was really, I did something different with my sleeves. I combined my two sleeves together on a needle because I really don't like knitting on four needles and I don't like knitting magic loop so I combined what it turned out for me was I had 12 inches at the top of my sleeve and eight inches at the bottom of my sleeve I figured out my gauge and I cast on my sleeves and then I combined the two things which gave me enough room that I only had to do a little bit of magic loop and it I don't know if it saves me time, right? I don't know if it actually saved me real time because I'm still doubling my stitches, but it, but it felt like I saved time. And it also felt like I would rather knit a larger piece of fabric and then and then uh, steak it uh, and cut it and seam up the sides than to do two separate sleeves using magic loop or on four needles. So that was my little thing. I did that. So I cast on the two sleeves worked around and then I took another gauge swatch after I had finished my sleeves and measured that they were at the measurement that I wanted and I figured out what my actual gauge was based on 17 inches of sleeves. So that's where I'm at. I'm kind of, I'm gonna do this. I'm going to get gauge swatch down and I'm going to make a sweater that actually fits me. So here is, um, I'm casting on a ribbing in the front. This is gonna be a bottom up sweater this is the ribbing I'm doing a three by three ribbing it seems huge but I think with the um you know this is the to front and back and once I cast it on and join the round I think it's going to fit better but it does uh, it is at my actual measurements that I want it to be I've measured it and checked it so yeah I'm, I'm getting there and um and I'll just keep you posted. I'm, I'm going to use some time today to knit. So I'm going to get through this thing. I'm going to bang through the sweater and then I'm going to share it with you. Hello. Okay. So I knit yesterday and I got most of the body ready. I held it up. I put it up against my, um, 
my original sweater that I want to have the same gauge as, and it's basically the same size, almost exactly, maybe an inch smaller at the waist, which I'm not unhappy about. And there's one potential problem about the waist because I didn't switch needle sizes when I was doing the ribbing. And so um, I didn't, I did a split hem and so the, I'm afraid that the front part of that ribbing is going to kind of like stick out a little bit or like be puffy, almost like a peplum, which I may or may not like, but um, I'll, I'm not going back. I'm not, I'm just going to really see this through and um, hopefully it will work out. Overall, I'm actually really happy. I still haven't blocked it. I haven't, but I used, underneath is a sweater that I used as a model, right? And I wanted, this was going to be a sweater that was gonna fit me how I wanted to, a sweater to fit me. And when I match it up, it actually matches up almost perfectly. So we're gonna talk about what worked, what didn't work, the Elizabeth Zimmerman method. It made a really nice decrease line here. I like that. Um, I haven't sewn up the bottoms of the sleeves. The sleeves came out a little shorter than um, I wanted. And that's partly because I did something different um, where I put the sleeves together on one needle and combined them and put in a steak and then cut the steak and stitched them up. Um, I had a little trouble with that and they became too small. So I'm being really real with you. And, um, and so the sleeves are a little too small. So they ended up a little too, my like slightly an inch too short. Here's the other error that I made when I got out of the raglan and, um, when I got out of it, I should have done at least an inch, I think, of knitting plain. I started thinking that I was I was worried about the neck getting too small, and so I started the ribbing right away. But what I think, and I'm hoping that if I when I block this, it will um, I, that I can kind of maybe stretch the the sleeves a little bit, and that that might relieve some of the tightness at the shoulders. But what happens is right around here, there's going to, there's like some, you can see it, it like it's become see-through because I have the ribbing right there. So it's a little bit tight, but that's it. Other than that, I'm really happy. I feel like for the first time in my life, I got gauge and I have a sweater that fits me that I think once I block it and seam it up, and I think it's going to be certainly wearable and, you know, passable. So I'm super happy about that. So let's just chat about the other details. Okay, so I used Elizabeth Zimmerman's pattern as a base for that sweater. And so I'm gonna give you my honest opinion. It was great, definitely useful, definitely like helped me get gauge and helped me to understand the importance of gauge and also taught me how to do a raglan, which I had never actually done. I've only done yoke sweaters. Actually, I think I did a, a raglan years ago and I struggled with it and I gave up. So I, this is the first time I've been successful with doing a raglan. However, there's this one part in the book where she describes when you come to the end and she has you do a short row and bring you around to the front. And then she has you, then the, the directions just become unclear. She says, put the rest of the front, front neck stitches on a thread. And I'm like, what front, what are you talking about? I just knit across the entire front run, front neck stitches. So I didn't know what switch stitches she was referring to. I even went to the opinionated knitter and I looked in there, she has a raglan um, description there. And I looked at what she said there and I, and again, it was kind of unclear how to end this. So I was kind of on my own, but what I did get was that you needed to close up the raglan. The raglan points needed to meet in the center. So I just went around and I did decreases every row because at this point I was getting worried that I was going to not have a big enough head hole, neck hole. <laughs> so I, I went around, I just closed up the raglan and as I said before, I felt a little bit, Eglin decreasing is very, um, 
it doesn't seem very precise to me. It seems very like it's just, you know, obviously it's just coming from the armpit and it's, it's decreasing in a straight line and it's very fitted in the shoulders, which is fine. But as I see in this case, it made a mistake because it was a little tight in the sleeves and I didn't leave some regular stock in it at the top. I have some like uh, stretch, some tightness that doesn't look that that's not, it's not ideal. It's not what you want. I feel like I took a class. I feel like I learned the importance of gauge and I'm actually really excited. I'm going to, when I sew up the sleeves, I'm going to put a gusset underneath because I feel like I need the extra space for um, the sleeves. I'm afraid because they're already so fitted. I'm afraid that if I don't put a gusset in there, it's going to, when I raise my arms, it's going to pull everything up and it's going to be too tight and too short. So I'm definitely going to put a gusset and um, I'm going to do this again. Now that I've done a raglan, I feel like I know what to expect and what the pitfalls of that are. So I definitely feel like this gets a out of, out of 10. This was an eight and a half out of 10. Um, my effort, I don't, I'm not grading my effort. I'm grading the experience of reading. I used knitting workshop and I used opinionated knitter. I would say eight and a half out of 10 for the ability to do um, a first time raglan sweater. And I did a turtleneck because it was the simplest thing, but I might be able to even uh, do something different next time around, knowing what I know. But I think an experienced knitter would be able to use this book and be able to not have the trouble that I had at all and be able to just take it on and make a great sweater. So I found this to be really helpful. Like this whole experience has kind of given me an, a real like understanding of how, what makes a sweater, what are the aspects of the sweater, what are the approximate percentages of the arms in, re in relation to uh, the body in a, in a raglan. There's different relations with the yoke sweater, with a set-in sleeve, with a drop sleeve. And I have access to all of that. And I feel like that's really good information as me as a, for me as a knitter. So it's definitely helping me to become a better knitter. And I'm really, I'm really pleased about that because this is something I love and I want to get better and better and use my time to become the best knitter I can possibly be. Okay, friends, here's my sweater. Thank you, Elizabeth Zimmerman. I mean, honestly, here's my raglan. I still have to sew the underarms. Here's my, the raglan, the turtleneck. It, it fits, it, it, it fits. It fits very well compared to my, any other sweater I've ever made. I still haven't blocked it. It'll smooth out. It's, it's just, you know, literally done. And I really love it. And as I said before, if it were not for Elizabeth Zimmerman, I couldn't knit and this is another example of that. It's her recipes just give you, give all knitters what's required to make a well-fitting garment that will work, that's comfortable, that is functional. So she's the best. I love Elizabeth Zimmerman.